Okay, we're live on the Feel Inspired podcast. I'm your wonderful, gorgeous host, Amit Soda. And today I've got an incredible guest. He's been through an incredible journey. Um, But before I introduce him, uh, let me give you a quick uh, overview of the podcast itself, the Feel Inspired podcast. Uh, I created this because I wanted to bring to you a platform that helps inspire you in the same way that I've been inspired when it's been, whether it's been, uh, you know, hearing a quote, watch, uh, watching a podcast or a video or a talk or reading a book or whatever in the way, same way that I've inspired, been been inspired, I want, I want to inspire other people. And so I'm bringing to you uh, some amazing guests. We've already had 25 amazing guests already. And today is the guest number 26. And he's got an incredible story, actually. And we're also going to be discussing his, um, uh, his absolutely amazing transformation. For anyone who's seen the fly, you will see his transformation. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk to him. In fact, I'm going to introduce him right now. His name is Dick Session. Patel, we're going to be talking about a holistic approach to coaching that includes mind, body, spirit, everything. Um, so without further ado, let's introduce our guest. So welcome, Dick Sesh, to the Feelings by the Podcast, episode 26. Yay! How are you doing? Thank you, well, thank you Amit, for uh, having me. Number 26, feel privileged to, to be on here. Uh, and hopefully you oh, yeah. will be inspired uh, as much as uh, you, the other 25 guests have inspired everybody. Um, so, yes, Dick Sesh Patel, um, what do I do? So, you know, a lot of people ask yeah, so tell me. Us, what, tell what, us a bit about yourself and how you've got to this point where you are right now in life and what's led you to this 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 place where you're at now, you know, part of your journey, how you got to this space, um, things that have happened, your ups and downs, and um, like I said, how you've got to where you are today. Yeah, I think um, I always start off right, going right back to the beginning. Uh, back, back, <laughs> back, back to the day when I was a wee lad, um, I myself was actually born in uh, uh, a little village in Tanzania called Morogoro. Um, oh, nice! And uh, little did I know that uh, when my father set sail, or shall I say, stepped onto an aeroplane in uh, 1973, uh, being three to f- odd years old, that uh, he would leave a legacy behind him. Um, so when we first landed, the, the story goes, he came here uh, with about £100 in his pocket. Um, and in those days, that's a lot of money, especially if you're a labourer. It's probably like two years' salary to give people an understanding of what £100 was worth back in those days. Um, and on his first uh, red bus trip, he got pickpocketed. Oh, my goodness me. He got pickpocketed, and he still, you know, to the day he disappeared uh, when he was 51, some 27 years ago now, um, you, you know, the the, th- the the statement goes that he came here actually with nothing because that was where he started. And throughout the early years, I mean, I grew up myself in a council estate, uh, initially in Kilburn, uh, traversed through Wilsdon, um, Tough times for a young Indian family, especially oh, with yeah. uh, three three young children. Um, but uh, if, if something doesn't break you, uh, hopefully it, it makes you into a much stronger person. And throughout, even you know, in the early years when I grew up, um, there were a lot of uh, things that, that work against you. Uh, and you know, I'll come on to some of the stories later on. Um, some of those character building exercises uh, for the. First time I remember when I got through schooling, tough, tough period. It was just a case of get heads down. Um, you know, the first real challenge was when applying for university and being told that uh, uh, when you put the first name down, that actually um, I don't think you're going to make it there, Dick Sesh. And I'll tell you what, uh, growing up in a council estate doesn't matter what your background any of you can go to some of the top universities. And yes, I did achieve, uh, ended up going to LSE in the end. Um, so that, that, that was the first sort of proud moment of being tenacious and not giving up. Um, subsequent to that, I spent over 25, 30 years uh, in a career in investment banking. Um, and throughout that time, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, always had a go. Um, um you know whatever it might be might have been some uh, network marketing thing back in the day all of a sudden you think you're going to be rich next week well turns out that actually it's hard work that actually gets you to where you need to be um and accelerating it further through i 
I couldn't say I thoroughly enjoyed the latter years in investment banking. A lot of ego, a lot of testosterone. You know, it's a, it's a dog eat dog type world. Um, and actually, for the third time of asking, I actually did finally quit four years ago. Um, and actually went into full time property development and property investment, which was exciting. In that time, I've also mentored quite a few businesses and I also uh, mentor people and coach people on the mindset and well being side of it. And it's only in the last sort of couple of years, as, as you pointed out earlier, uh, the biggest missing piece of the jigsaw was personal health, mental health, and well-being, which for me has now added the third piece of the jigsaw to the to the business and mindset coaching is the body transformation coaching. Now, why is you know we'll come on to a bit more detail later on, uh, but that has actually revolutionised the way. Uh, the thinking has gone, the focus, the mental clarity, you know, training your mind to have a single mindedness. Um, and in the early years, you know, I'd, I'd say I was scatter, scatter gun, scatter gun pro, scatter brain. Um, and I would probably jump to the nearest shiny penny. Uh, as soon as the shiny penny comes, I'll be off. Whereas now I've got a firm fixed strategy in my property business, I've got a firm fixed strategy in my coaching uh, business which I now take on uh, a very holistic view because if you can control yourself a focus and discipline the domino effect outward bound to everything else is incredible beautiful I love uh, and I think um, uh, there's a beautiful story and I think we've got some definitely got some synergy there as well but I think what uh, has been most striking is and, and I've always said this to people as well is um, being the proof of the pudding, being, you know, yourself being the proof in the pudding. Uh, and you've kind of shown that a lot with your recent transformation, which was, of course, very recent as well. In fact, it happened really when you were, uh, I think, just after your 50th birthday, if I'm correct, or correct me if I'm wrong, or approaching. Approaching 50, yeah, just after 50 years old, yeah. So let, let's start there, actually, just on this this whole transformation thing as well, because obviously I think that this is a huge part of it anyway. I mean, don't like you, you, you've you obviously got your your holy tree, Mati, as well. But I think that uh, uh, there are certain areas, I think, that uh, especially because for, for, the, for the very reason of it just being a very visceral um, uh, proof of your efforts and fruits of your, fruits of your efforts. And so. For that reason alone, people are going to see it and just go, wow. I mean, I, I saw it. I remember when we last met, which was, you know, at least good three years ago, which is mm -hmm. prior to it all happening. And then seeing the pictures afterwards, it was just like, whoa. I mean, that is just an incredible change. And it was you lost pretty much as many kilos as years in age you have as well. So so right. I think that, that let's let's so let's start there. Let's talk this through as well. Like what happened to you? What 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 did you get to a certain point in your life where you just thought mm, I've got to do this, I've got to change something. Did something else happen? Was it an outside intervention event? Uh was it just something you decided to do and then follow through on? I think it's a it's a great question. Um like just from my own experience when uh change needs to happen uh the big burning ember is you need to know why there has to be a why without the why there you know there, there isn't likely to be any gravitas and for me um and we're talking probably some over three to four four years now four years ago my body started changing um and, and to put it bluntly that was 120 kilos and i'm not surprised my body started complaining uh, you know, aches, pains, irritations, gout. You know, I'd already been classed as a pre-diabetic. And I remember, uh, you know, I call it my uh, Far Eastern experience coming back from a, what I would call is an excess uh, of a uh, holiday of uh, drinking and binging. I genuinely was in a lot of pain because my gout had kicked in. Uh, and, and I remember looking in the mirror and to, to further qualify it, my father had passed away when he was 51 and I just decided in brutal terms that it wasn't my time to go and I had to change. Otherwise, um, you know, I'd, I'd be leaving behind a family and, and two young lads who, who, who aspire 
uh, to do better. And that was the burning uh, ember, the trigger that set, set me off on a path. Um, and I think Isn't it one time, go on, sorry. No, no, carry on, please continue, go on. Yeah, the, the thing I'd realized from my own sort of uh, past with uh, business mentoring and coaching, because I have a, a business mentor and a mindset coach myself, I always say, and as my coach always says, in order to coach others, you or one also has to be coachable and you have to lead the way as well. Because uh, if you want to be the best, you have to learn from the best. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, yeah, so I just decided it wasn't my time to go, but I knew I couldn't do this myself. Um, and that's where I, I, I drove forward and actually hired a, a, a body transformation coach myself. Um, and that was the first sort of stepping stone to knowing that actually having somebody behind you who's got your back uh, that can set a roadmap um, and then we just set sail. It was literally one step at a time, one meal at a time, one workout, one day. And I just kept going. I'm not suggesting it was easy. It's never easy to drop just under 50 kilos uh, in, in, in the space of around just under 12 months. Um, but the, the, the biggest inspiration I can give to anybody who has to sort of, who wants to sort of uh, transform their health is just to focus on one day at a time, bring in the experts who know what they're doing and also to make yourself accountable. And I think that's the thing that, that ended up driving me towards that. The accountability was huge because you get a kick up the backside when you need one. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, it's interesting you mentioned about <clears throat> reaching the age where your dad actually passed away. Um, it, it wasn't just my sister, but my sister passed away when she was like 38. Uh, just wow. to, She was about to be 39 a week later and she was very young. And I remember when I hit that age, uh, you know, it just it was it is mind boggling sometimes when you realize it and just. It just dawns on you and you realize, holy cow, you know, I've reached the age where she um, you know, passed away at this age. So you have to start taking your health a little bit more seriously. You know, you've got this vehicle that is your tool. And if you don't look after it and you don't um, take it seriously, then obviously you're going to end up suffering a lot later. Uh, and you, you, it's funny, you talk about 120 kilos. Come on, that's light. That's nothing. <laughs> way, way, much, way, way much more on you. <laughs> uh, well, where, where there's a will, there's a way. And that's, 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 the, that's the main thing. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah, no. So it's, it's incredible what you did. And so how long did this take? And like, what, you know, what were some of your challenges? Like, how did you keep going for the, uh, and this, this is what fascinates me. And one of the things I talk to people a lot about is when the going gets really tough, like those days, you just don't want to get up and go to the gym. The days you want to have that nice bagel or muffin or whatever it is, that's your, your treat or beer or whatever. Right. What dr drove you to keep going? Uh, except, I, I know you mentioned accountability and stuff, but I, I actually believe that accountability is not enough. I think it's something, has, something has to drive us much more. So I'm curious, what was yours? I think what it is, is um, it's, it's belief. It's, it's the belief that this is possible because uh, when you're sort of looking down a dark tunnel and, and you're 120 kilos, there's nobody who's going to carry you through that tunnel the only person who's going to put you through that to see the light at the end of the tunnel is you. It's only so, it's like you suggest, there's only so much accountability you have. And the, the, t the tipping point for me is um, when you start seeing results. When you start seeing a kilo dropping every week, uh, and, you know, and for me, it started, my metabolism started kicking in after about week eight, and I noticed this. You know, I was just like every week a kilo was dropping and dropping. And that, once that happens and you've got some momentum, there is genuinely no turning back. And there are times where you do have uh, challenges, you know, the winter months. Nobody wants to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go and do some steps or go to the gym. Um, but what I do know is I knew there was some light at the end of the tunnel as I was starting to approach the goal. And I think one of the key things that uh, we did sort of in the late part of uh, 
I think it was four or five months before uh, my photo shoot. And now I wasn't planning on one. My coach just dug his heels in. Yup, you're having a photo shoot. That also is a game changer because it gravitases you towards the deadline and the goal. Uh, because you want to look your best, right? Um, and that, that's uh, the, the biggest uh, thing I can impart people is get some momentum going. That's where it drives your belief, which sits underneath why you want to do this. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I, I think that that uh, I, I think that does sum it up probably for quite a lot of people as well. But I've noticed as well, there's some people out there who just, no matter what you do or say, they won't they won't change until something happens. Until there's something a big enough event that happens. An example I could think of a few people where this has happened where they've had a heart attack, been diagnosed with diabetes, their child has said, "Don't die on me," so young, and only then and only then will they. Uh, then wake up like for me there was a couple of things I think there's a couple of things which was one was a breakup did it for me and one of the reasons that a breakup occurred many years ago was was weight um, but also I think the second thing was the realization that you know what uh, I'm, I'm not your age but I'm getting my and obviously you, and when I say that I don't mean that in a bad way I mean just in terms of for me I've noticed uh, myself a lot of men included as well you hit 35 40 you will feel the changes in your body big time 100%. and yeah, yeah so you you'll you'll start to realize then actually you're not going to be young forever and the only you, you you rest on your laurels up until that point fair enough but beyond that you cannot rest on your laurels you know you try and wake up or, or try and do a stretch when you're you know 43 or whatever and bend over and see if your back doesn't give out i mean that happens to a lot of people it happens to be, I mean, I'm a big guy, but if I happens to people who are a quarter of my size, you know, they'll think they, they're OK and then they'll suddenly bend over. So before they know it, they've slipped a disc. They, they've got, um, you know, a herniated disc. They've, uh, you know, done something, caused some other injury or they found out they got diabetes and that's it. And then, they, then it's kind of like, it, well, it's not too late at that point, but it's taken it to get to that point before they will actually make a change. But we have the choice to do something much sooner if you want to as well. And you can actually take proactive action now to make sure you don't get to that point that, mm -hmm. you know, you, it could happen, right? It could happen to anyone. We, we're not, we all, as much as, especially guys, we all think we're supermen, right? And that we're going to be impervious yeah. to all this, but no, the first time it happens, you're going to, you're going to be having probably quite a bit, a huge amount of regret, I think. And then, um, um, and then you'll, then you'll have that wake up moment and realize, actually, I've got to start taking care of myself, looking after myself and, uh, and doing something about it before it is irreparable. Damage. It's an interesting point because, uh, that's one of the things that I sort of, um, talk about when I see some of the younger guys out there, even the younger, younger women, the time to get yourself into that, uh, uh, healthy state you know, mental or otherwise, overall well-being is when you don't need it because it is so yeah. much easier to start when you don't need it because by the time you get towards the 40s and the 50s, you'll be in ultra-fit shape. And, that, yeah. and that's, that's, that's the key. Do it when you don't need it because the body, as we know, has a good way of kicking and spitting back at you as you get older. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So true. So true. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk more about this, what our subject was as well, which is about the holistic side of coaching. And uh, and the, the as we as we said earlier, your, your holy trimathy of uh, uh, coaching. So let, let's start with that and tell me a little bit about what your approach is and how do you, how does or let, let's do it this way. Actually. How do you help someone who's going through a rough time with everything going on right now? Perhaps they're a bit disillusioned with everything going on, not in a great mental state. They're having mental health issues. They're feeling a bit low, feeling low energy, harding, finding it hard to maintain any sort of sense of rhythm, routine, get exercise, get out, all of this kind of stuff. Where do you start with someone when they need uh, the correct cor kick up the ass, so to speak? I think it, I, I, where I tend to start off is, is I put my empathetic hat on uh, because uh, – you know, just listening to the words because everybody has all the answers. They have them from within. All I'm going to do is provide you with the key. Uh, you will then ultimately have to unlock that door, open the door and step in. So that's the first stage is just to find out what what's the issue. And typically, most people 
tend to start telling them still stories you know oh i'm i'm 50 years old i can't do this i'm diabetic my my father passed away at 51 it's not possible it's in my dna and all of a sudden the narrative is running so that's stage one is to find out what the narrative is and give people a cold hard realization that none of that is real that's just the stories that people keep telling themselves uh, so that's stage one stage two as you sort of mentioned earlier a lot of people what they tend to do is they don't really have a huge amount of structure and the best analogy to provide is schools if schools did not have timetables it would be chaos yeah it's no different uh, that when we go into adulthood that we don't need structure because it's the structure that creates stability in our lives and we know that at a certain point in time whether it's on the monday or the tuesday or the wednesday things are going to be happening whether it's you're going to work or whether you're going to go to the gym or whether it's going to cook in your food is to give people that structure and then once they find the points where things are, are common guess what there's going to be a lot of white spaces left uh, in your time you know most people tell me i haven't got enough time so it's trying to get time out of their structure that they know they've got but they can't see it and start moving people in towards an educational run you know listen to a podcast listen to the feel inspired podcast you know whenever i go out walking i'm listening to podcasts as well as audibles get yourself into a, a, in a into a learning mindset start activating uh, your, your thinking and start creating some momentum in your life so that your mind space is used up with things that are going to drive you forward not at just at the personal level but people around you and to inspire you to then in the domino effect inspire others and that's hugely important i think you, you, you know what it's like a lot of times people say i haven't got enough time but actually when you dig deeper a lot of those stories just sit in our own minds uh without any structure and st so structure is the biggest thing whatever it might mean to you in terms of what allows you to get from a certain point in time a to b to c to d once we do that we then take a step back uh, and a lot of you know depending on which part of the triage people come from whether it's the mindset side or the or the body transformation or the business coaching uh, it's about strategy and structure without a strategy yeah how will you know what structure you need and that's important with all three facets what i find is the fitness side of it the body transformation coaching allows you to train your mind in such a way that creates a single mindedness of focus in a specific activity because if you can be laser beam in one activity and you get good at that, guess what? You will gravitate towards being single-minded and have huge amounts of focus in other parts of your activity, whether it's your personal development at the mindset level to, be, you know, to be, become more positive, to have a growth mindset, have a learning attitude. Yeah? And then on your business side, if you don't know what your strategy is, how will you know uh whether you're actually following a specific path and how will you know what success looks like Does that Absol make yeah 100 percent. so talk us through your three uh and your kind of overall approach or your starting point good question so from from my side um whenever anybody comes to me typically they'll come uh through one part of the triangle so some clients will come through body transformation. Some clients will come typically through the business coaching. And depending on which side they come from, the first stage is just to understand the problem statement. What is the problem? Yeah. So if we're talking about the business, what's the gap analysis in your business? What's the problem? Is it lack of profitability? Is it you know an issue with your your product market fit is there an issue in your sales strategy and your marketing strategy is it that you haven't got a handle on finances 
So that first stage is to identify the problem statement, not too dissimilar on your body transformation. You know, are you overweight? Do you have any specific health issues? Yeah, what target or what goals do we need to set to get you to a certain point in time? And then it's just a case of setting a roadmap and a plan to get people uh, moving pretty much um, in short chunks. So if it's business uh, driving, you know, we end up after that initial period of gap, uh, gap analysis and fact finding as to what the challenges are in the business. Stage two is uh, creating a, a, and refining their strategy. A lot of people uh, typically won't even have a strategy. They don't even know what strategy looks like. Uh, so we look at their strategy and set sail in, in creating 90-day goals, 90-day roadmaps, so that it feels bite-sizable chunks rather than giving somebody a 24-month strategic plan that creates overwhelm. So for me, it's about creating bite-sizable chunks, whichever facet of the triangle you come from. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Chunking down is such a big thing, isn't it? Overwhelm can create so much stall in people. I know I've been there. I've done it as well, where you just want to take a mammoth sized chunk out of something. But actually, that, if anything, is very stifling um, because sometimes we our brains just don't work that way. We need it in sort of small, easy to digest uh, pieces, a bit like our food. Uh, our digestion it works in the same way. Uh, we need to approach it in that same manner as well to start with something very very small uh and then gradually gradually scale up from there um but it has to it has to begin with that and and then of course the the, the most uh, obvious of things right is just starting and that's that's it right because most people make all these grand plans but then they never actually start they just they kind of like oh i'll start next week i'll start two weeks from now i will you know when when, when i get the time i'm going to do this type of thing you know all those little stories excuses as you mentioned earlier the stories the narratives that can cause and and become the we can become our biggest enemy in, in ourselves mm -hmm. by doing that by listening to those voices right absolutely yeah and i think that i i, I would i always like to say set sail perfect later because otherwise you're never going to get to first base. You and typically, do, you know, I it's either do or don't. But for goodness sake, don't sit on the fence. Take some action. Take some activity to at least create an experience in life. And even if you fail, fail fast, fail often, and learn loads. Absolutely. Yeah. Taking a little bit of Will Smith's lines there, right? Fell fast, fell forward, um, or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, no, absolutely. hundred um, percent. And so like, where do you start with, with yourself, by the way, like in terms of the challenges you face on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you keep yourself, keep your head above water when, when you're in the thick of it? Not, not the, not particularly the days when the days are good, but when you're, when you're in the thick of it and you know, maybe everything's coming at once or anything that could go wrong is going wrong type of thing those types of situations or or perhaps you're just not in a very good headspace you know how do you keep yourself uh, above water what do you do what's your hacks for yourself yeah i think uh, some what the reason this this is a great question by the way it, a lot of people uh, suffer from overwhelm because they think they have to solve everything right there and that at that point in time so one of the things that i utilize myself is almost creating a library system in my mind so over the next 72 hours the next three days what activity on my to-do list needs to be action right now or something bad is going to happen you know decisive action needs to be taken and then anything between the four day and the two week horizon goes into that bucket and I, it's then parked because i don't need to think about it today that allows me to create headspace and anything beyond the two-week horizon that requires work later on or we're waiting for de external dependencies, other people potentially, or projects overrunning, they go into the further horizon. And that, what I find, is by structuring your, your to-do list into almost like a library uh, system. And, you know, people will find their own windows. For me, a three-day initial activity of to-do items is, is a good window to have 
such that it allows me to just to focus on that rather than all the noise of all the all the far term items so it's about it's about getting organized in your own mind as to what that to do list and you know write things down prioritize it's hugely important because the overwhelm comes from the fact that uh, everything's spinning around our head at 100 miles an hour and you know especially in today's climate uh it's easy to sort of get stuck at home stuck in a rut uh, and start overanalyzing things so don't overanalyze these things you know create small chunks in your forward timeline so that you're able to chip away one item at a time now that's that's good advice i think for many people anyone watching this is going to be able to get that on board and actually just apply it which is uh you know ultimately what we want to do is how do we take some of this on board and start applying it now not just not tomorrow not next week you know actually start taking this on board and doing it putting it in their lives today um what are some of the challenges you come across from other people who come to you and obviously want your coaching and stuff you know one of the things you're seeing especially at the moment with everything going on you know and what are you what are you saying to people what are you kind of advising them coaching on and how are you helping them with everything like i said in this current crazy time yeah i think it's uh, again that's a that's great question one of the things that um uh that i'm advising people is if we don't have the time today in the current climate when will we have the time you know especially where there's lockdown so um i mentioned this earlier find out whether there's a gap analysis in your knowledge be it at a personal level business level whatever it might be and start looking at uh, educating yourself start having that learning attitude and start growing as an individual and start using that what i would refer to as the the t the spare time as we call it or the time that perceived time that we don't have to start creating momentum uh in your thinking uh, and also your mindset development that's that's huge secondly um we spoke about structure but take that to a whole new level so that once you've got all the gaps that you've identified, start creating a roadmap of the things that you need to learn. So for example, if you want to become uh, an online body transformation coach, you know, I, I know a lot of people who've been through their own journeys that aspire to be the same. What activity or qualifications or educational material uh, do you need in order to get you towards that goal? Do you need some support or experience support or an experienced coach behind you uh, to, to provide that support or service? Because um, we can't know it all. Um, that's the key. Why not short circuit things and accelerate things in your own development through somebody else's expertise and experience so you don't have to make the same mistakes? But the key part is set sail and get cracking and, and, and just don't sit on your on your ass um uh, tw uh, tw twiddling uh, uh thumbs right oh god yeah i think that's the worst thing isn't it procrastination and just uh, for me the worst thing is um and i hear this so often from people is just that it's not the procrastination so much it's the fact that you'll you'll become aware of it at some point that a year has passed two years have passed the things you wanted to do written that book uh, started that business um because that podcast um and all this time has you know passed by and you realize and you get there and you think holy cow i could i had all this time to do it and now things are ba busy life has happened babies come uh you've been made redundancy then you have to job hunt this that and the other and so if you don't seize the opportunities now while you have the chance you end up missing out on so much uh, opportunity in the now no matter how busy and i i've really started to really discipline myself and not use those words busy anymore because i think that that is such a cop out mm -hmm. and i don't care i genuinely don't care how busy you are it doesn't matter it really is it really doesn't matter you have to find a way to make the time if it's something you really want to do you will find a way and even if it's starting off with just 20 minutes uh, a day to dedicate towards whatever life project you want to achieve whether it's writing a book the, you know podcasting um learning guitar learning a language whatever it is you can do it and you can find the time um i think that the, the challenge that people have is finding the energy 
and that's that's the thing as well because by the time they've done most of their their usual day stuff they find that they're lacking energy so what would you say for people who feel that maybe the energy is a thing that's missing uh, how can they get more energy feel more vibrant feel more um feel like they have got the capacity to do these things and you know follow through on some of these things oh that's Brilliant question, actually. I, I would say that I used to run the narrative or the stories in my mind some two years ago about fatigue and tired and lack of time. Um, I would say that our own internal health and mental health and well-being is the first place to start because I'm bouncing around like Tigger because I have so much activity, whether it's weight training or going out walking, my body is physically fatigued such that I actually get better sleep. And a lot of people underestimate the power of sleep. But if you're not getting good quality deep sleep, it then has a cascading effect on your, on, on, on your daytime life. So if you're getting much better sleep through your own uh, internal you know, health, mental health, well-being, what you'll find is that's where the energy drives from. That's number one. Number two is genuinely, you know, I think you used the, the child card earlier. Focus on what's your why. You know, why are you doing this? You uh, are, are doing this podcast because you want to leave people in a better place and want to inspire people. I'm here, uh, somebody sharing my life's journey and stories because it will hopefully leave at least one person listening in uh, into a better place. And that's my why is to inspire others to do better and go off and inspire others so that we change one person's life one per one day at a time. And that that's where my energy comes from. Because once you find that why, once you've controlled your own internalized health and well-being, you will find that uh, uh, spring in your step. Absolutely. Michelle saying, yeah, I love that. Starting with why. It's a great book as well. By the way, if anyone's not read that book by Simon Sinek, it's really worth reading. So, uh, start with why. Powerful book. Uh, and it's so true. I say this to everyone as well. If you don't have a why, then often you're, you're missing the most important piece of the puzzle. And no wonder you're struggling. It, it's not always necessary. Sometimes you just got to go out and try different things. And you know what? You know, even if you're in a place in your life where right now where you're stuck, it doesn't matter. Just go out, try different things. At yeah. least, you know, you know, even in the dating uh, world capacity, I say to people, look, you know, when people say to me, they're not sure what to talk about. I'm like, are you kidding me? Seriously, you've got a piece of infinite technology in your hands. How could you not have things to talk about? It's just it's crazy. And even on that on that note, you've got like, you know, so much information there. you can do your research, find out different things you want to try. Even in lockdown, there's infinite options. You could teach yourself guitar online. You could, you know, yeah. like I said, Start writing your book if you've always had a dream of writing a book or or become, uh, you know, uh, you start creating your movie that you've always wanted to create, right? Or reaching out to people, start making those contacts for the projects you want to do. You want to do a bit of crowdfunding, go on, do some crowdfunding. That's not that hard to do. My One of my friends, Mo, raised, raised like 250 grand, you know, for himself, um, mm -hmm. being the, the, core, the, the cause behind that uh, crowdfunding. Um, he had a terminal cancer and he did incredibly well by raising this money. Um, but the thing is as well, nothing, uh, there, there's the uh, the old adage, the physics adage that nothing happens until something moves. And so you have to start somewhere. Uh, and so having a why is wonderful, but don't wait to find that why as well, because you'll just end up being stuck. You know what? Just do something, try something. And gradually the answers will come to you as well. I was speaking to someone else about this recently that, that often when you get into a bit of flow anyway, the answers tend to come. So you don't yeah. have to worry about trying to find them. They'll, they'll come to you when you're in that zone. You know, you get into your uh, a little, um, you know, zone, flow, whatever you want to call it. It will come. It will come in time. Um, but you just have to. And I think, yeah, the great, a great example is myself for going through my own sort of physical transformation. If you had told me two years ago before I started, uh, would you be a body transformation coach uh, on top of your other coaching arms? And would you be coaching uh, clients to fitness? I might have laughed at you, Amit, but <laughs> it, it, it's, it's actually it's come later on because I've enjoyed the process myself so much 
that I thought now I have something in the palm of my hands uh, that I can actually share and spread the love. So yes, to your point, get get on with it, and it's a bit like driving. Get into first gear. Things will be come clearer when you need to go to second gear third gear uh, and also knowing when to take a left turn a right turn or go straight it, it'll come to you and the key part is you're getting better and better at driving and that's hugely important for people yeah i often use a very similar analogy as well uh, but going back to your transformation by the way as well i forgot to ask it earlier and i just wanted to go over it again because i think it's such a big part of your story like for anyone watching this right now if you just joined or you're watching a replay or listening back to the podcast so they say she lost over 50 kg anyway and last time i saw him he was like almost you know we could have been two sumo wrestlers in competition at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> and then he went through an amazing transformation and and i have to say it's probably one of the most amazing transformations i've seen personally as well like just to lose that amount of weight because sometimes you see you see transformation these people were that really that fat <laughs> to begin with don't get me wrong not to not to take any way thing away from them but when you're really big to then get to that spot is just you know to get to that place where what, what you've achieved dropping 50 kg and of course most importantly maintaining it as well i mean i think it's phenomenal and so just tell people a little bit about that whole process like what what happened what did you do how did you do it how did you get to the point where you are now some of the challenges changes to diet how you maintained it with all the perhaps temptation around you all of this kind of stuff you know how did you how did you cope and do it and you know and also thrive doing it as well yeah, I think um, after getting past that initial, what I refer to that first eight weeks of gathered momentum, I would call that, once you start seeing weight drop off, that creates a huge amount of internal focus. Um, that's number one. Uh, in terms of distractions, as far as uh, from, from my perspective, there is no straight line to success. Yeah. Um, Yes, there are times where I've had a bar of chocolate or I've gone and had a chocolate cake, but I've known to be 100% honest with my own coach so that we can actually reel things back in. Because there's always going to be areas where, uh, you know, in the current climate, it's devaluing now. There are lots of distractions with, uh, you know, fatty foods and sugary things. Um, key part is be present, enjoy that moment in time but know that you're learning skills in your own physical transformation that will allow you to make sure that you can actually reset the clock whenever you want to that's the second thing third thing is i always say that success leaves clues how am i privileged enough to maintain my uh physique and weight 18 months since my uh, photo shoot it's been that that bloody long is i still have my coach it's a bit it's a bit like um buying a brand new car and deciding that you're going to service it yourself it's not going to happen right you need that post sales service support to make sure you don't go back to your old ways because this isn't a diet this is a lifestyle and believe it or not once you get past a certain point and hit your initial weight loss goals, there is a whole process afterwards to actually reintroduce food and calories back into your system so that the holy grail is you can have your cake and eat it when you want to. Exactly right. It's not about complete abstinence, but it's about being in charge of it. It's that self-control, that self-leadership, right? You can still have your own treat whenever you want, but... Um, but it, it's that whole question of why are you having that treat excessively? Like, you know, what's the underlying reason? What's what, what hole are you trying to fill when you have those treats? Right. It's just, yeah. um, uh, and that's the thing as well. A lot, not a lot of people realize that the, the cause behind what it is they're doing, why they're eating a certain way, what, and, and then obviously it does lead into habits and stuff as well, but it also, um, it, uh, it's a combination, isn't it as well? It's that, that there could be, for example, some perhaps trauma or or uh, perhaps it's just a, a shielding or a way of dealing with pain. It could be anything like that. A lot of people have different reasons for it. 
Um, uh, Michelle, Michelle's asking, he said, how did you keep up the motivation as well? So we kind of discussed that a little bit, but if you want to answer it in your own words um, about how you kept everything going. I think uh, one of the things that I, I've grown to love, I mean, I never enjoyed weight training in the early years. Hell, I couldn't even lift a deadlift bar at 120 kilos. It, you know, it was quite depressing back in the day. But what I found is I actually, when I'm going to the gym, it's almost my, like my temple. It allows me to sort of be ultra focused because it's just you, it's the iron. And if you're not focused and you haven't got your technique 100%, you will hurt yourself. So what that has allowed me to do is to shut everything else out and almost go into a deep state of hypnosis. And that I look forward to and jump out of bed every day because it just gives me that me time in the gym for an hour, hour and a half. And that allows me to just filter out anything that's going on to create a state of calmness. And that's that for me is the, the biggest game changer. And I still, you know, still go to the gym um, four times a week. The, the, the other thing that's really helped is with the experience guidance to know that actually this isn't a diet forever. I'm actually eating like a bloody horse today <laughs> compared to what I used to eat uh over two years ago and it's knowing uh, and uh, and uh learning about having better choices rather than a horrible sugary milk chocolate maybe go for a, a slightly uh a heavier dark chocolate for example with less fat and you know lower calories and along the way i've learned to make better choices and still be able to enjoy my food and and the biggest uh thing uh, that kept me going is it took me over 49 to 50 years to get addicted to bad nutrition i genuinely am now addicted to good nutrition so what's that mean for people if people can get to that side to the holy grail when you start putting rubbish back into your system after that tipping point your body will spit that back out again it doesn't want it i just crash so i don't enjoy the, the crash of putting bad nutrition into my system. It's like having a hangover. No, thank you. I'd rather have more energy. And yeah. Those no. It's so true, isn't it? Like, I don't know about you. There's certain things I just can't eat anymore, like white bread. Oh, my God. Like, that's just – for me, that's repulsive. Like, we – First, we have porridge and then we have uh, on the side we'll have rye bread and rye bread is delicious and we were have, at one point i was having sourdough bagels as well and they just taste so much nicer than Absolutely. normal normal white bread or whatever anything like that or um and i know you're not vegan but like even if now if i accidentally have anything that's non-vegan like i cannot even take the taste of it i spot it a mile off uh, yeah. and for me it's just the take the take it's just the world of difference like free, a good, good example but i haven't drunk milk for years if a, t a drop of milk touches my lips now i'll almost gag like it's just the taste is just so unpalatable for me now like i love almond milk soya milk or anything else any alternative but i just can't even take them anymore like can't even put I'm it in my really mouth right. I haven't had any uh, milk or dairy for three years either. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, and it's and it's it's fantastic. amazing the difference it can make, especially when you take out a bit of dairy and also most wheat as well. It just makes such a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with your with the white bread, it is again bad nutrition will cr crash the system. But you have to reset your system first to reverse mm. all those bad habits and actually get addicted to good nutrition because that. I tell you, once you're at that point, if I if I could uh, box that up into some juice and spread that magic dust, that's what I would uh, wish for everybody to get to what to the point in terms of what I can see, and that's phenomenal. That's where my energy comes from. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, again, I just couldn't agree with more because I, I've experienced it firsthand as well that you your palate will gradually change once you change, start changing your foods, bring in, even if it's in the beginning, you're just using alternate foods, right? You know, you don't have to, like, the, the worst thing you can do when you want to lose weight is, as we all know, is restrict yourself because what you'll do is you'll you'll suddenly have a pig out, right? You'll, most people, well, most people have that psychology where they will pig out on stuff if they've restricted mm -hmm. themselves. So instead, find better alternatives, change your palate first and then gradually it'll become easier anyway like you'll find that things like for example rye bread for example is 
much more filling. It, it really does satiate you completely, as opposed to say white bread will make you feel even more hungry and want you to eat even more. So if you could do do one thing to begin with, that would be a good place to start because then gradually your palate will change. And obviously there's biology behind this, your biome will change, your, your biome preference will change um, and your stomach will change, your digestion will change, your poop will change, everything will change. Absolutely. And you'll find it very hard to go backwards ever yeah and it, and it, again it's not too dissimilar to your own personal mindset development once mm -hmm. you start getting towards that those good habits of mindset focus you know the manifestation of just heading in the right direction and the positive affirmative action ta taking mindset as you said things will start opening up doors will start opening that you never even saw before in mm -hmm. business activity you'll become you know more and more experience like why do we go to university we spend three years becoming a subject matter expert in a specific field it's no different when we get out into the real world it takes that long even to build a business for example in you know three odd years uh, if that makes sense but yeah so i'd say for to people the energy comes from within the dry there will always be distractions um but the good things will come if you put in the hard miles yeah i again just so so i think we're on the same page definitely you're you're absolutely right and i i always say to people like you know, even if we've said this a hundred times don't worry because you know it, it takes time for this to get hammered into our subconscious before before we actually start to apply what we've learned uh that's a big lesson as well i say to people that you know what when someone someone actually said this to me as well they said oh, i know all of this stuff i've learned it and i'm like but do you practice it if you yeah. don't practice it you don't know it there's a great quote i put up the other day that those who know but don't do don't know anything uh, and like and if you're not applying what you know you don't know it it's, that's the that's the bare naked truth that you need to accept and when you start applying it then you can say you know it uh, uh and that's so so true so it's been it's been a brilliant conversation finding out more about you and um um before we finish up though i want to ask you one more question but before i do that tell everyone how they can connect with you where they can connect with you how they can reach out to you if they wanted to yeah, so you can connect with me on Facebook. Uh, that's uh, Dixesh Patel, D-I-K-S-E-S-H. -S LinkedIn uh, as well, Dixesh Patel. My Instagram is at Dixesh. Uh, Twitter is at Dixesh as well. Uh, and, you know, once you connect with me, feel free if you if you need any more information or you need any help or you need a uh, just like a shoulder, uh, message me. I'm, I'm always here uh, for people because, you know, it's challenging times. And that for, for, for your audience, I'm, I'm happy to sort of spare that uh, initial 30 minute chat if people want it. Not not an issue. Absolutely. And what's what's the legacy you want to leave behind uh, once, you know, once you're a part of this planet right now? Well, what is, how would you like to be remembered? Not necessarily remembered, but the legacy you would like to leave behind. What is the what is the, the ultimate purpose for you? What's the thing you want to uh, have on your headstone? I think. Um, I'd, I'd like to be remembered uh, for creating inspirational leaders. Yeah, and it's almost like the, the, t the teaching a man how to f uh, fish or eat the fish. I'd rather teach people how to fish so that they can go off and uh, inspire people. In real money, inspired squared, if I can call it that. Nice. That's a good title for a book, actually. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, I just I just started listening today to um, one of Gabriel Bernstein's audio books, and it's uh, "You Are the Guru," and ex essentially the very same message as well. Um, you know, creating leaders, realizing that you are actually the leader, and you need to uh, start embracing that that notion, and then you can start living it as well. Absolutely. 100%. It's been a absolute pleasure chatting to you. The success has uh, been, uh, obviously, we've known, like I said, we've known each other for a while, but is all, I, I don't deliberately get to know everyone that well before the chat because it's always good to get to know people during. And so um, it's been a pleasure having you and learning more about your philosophy, your journey, and where you're headed and the legacy you want to leave. And no doubt at some point in the future, we'll have you as a guest again. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. And uh... I'm, I'm hopeful that the audience will be inspired as well. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
but yeah they, they will be 100 percent. so listen thank you again to everyone watching this is the feel inspired podcast i'm of course amit soda this was guest number 26 Nick Sesh patel you can reach out to him uh, you can see the details on the flyer um but if you're listening back i will update uh the podcast with the, all the details and all the videos as well with all the details and links and how you can connect uh to Nick Sesh and myself as well and on that note i want to wish you all a beautiful week ahead a happy diwali christmas thanksgiving all of the rest as well i know it's all coming up very quick so so have a have a wonderful week ahead and i'll speak to you all soon uh you can stay on with me as well i'll end the live now ciao everyone take care bye bye